Monster Hunter is a game that can be broken down into two core concepts, big monsters and big weapons. Many big weapons, many big monsters. But I'm more interested in the big weapons today. Monster Hunter offers you a lot of choice in how you play the game. There's obviously the campaign mode, which has missions you are required to do, but outside of that, it's your choice how you play. What missions you play, what monsters you hunt, what resources you collect, how you look, what armor you wear, and most importantly, what weapon you wield. There are 14 choices of weapons you can build for yourself and wield in Monster Hunter, each one coming with their own handful of combat styles and ways to play, and which weapon you choose kind of says a lot about who you are and how you like to play games. Are you a big tanky boy who leads the charge? Are you a careful healer who hangs back and doles out support? Are you a tanky healer who leads the charge and doles out support? Let's break it down. Talio, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Moly Sausage, and this is What Your Monster Hunter Weapon Says About You. The Greatsword is big, heavy, and makes big ouchies. If you play with the Greatsword, you like power, precision, and making Rathian cower in fear if you so much as sneeze at her. The Greatsword is a slow weapon, requiring timing and patience to deal some of the highest damage numbers this side of the new world. People may think you're basic for picking a weapon so simple as the Greatsword, but when you roll into a hunt, you're ready and willing to show them the absolute SMACKDOWN power you can dole out. Greatsword isn't basic, Greatsword is an art form. Greatsword players are expert leaders who plan their every move ahead of time. The bigger they are, the harder they stab. Where the Greatsword is big, heavy, and takes precision and timing to wield successfully, the Longsword is long, light, and rewards button mashy playstyle. If you hit a button, odds are you'll deal a bucket load of damage without much thought. Longsword players aren't here to plan or strategize, they're not here for teamwork. Boy are they not here for teamwork. Longsword players are here to grab that cool looking sword they saw in their favorite anime and deal an unholy Omewamu Mo Shinderu Smackdown on any poor Jagras who's just minding his own business. Longsword players want to enjoy games the simple way and look cool while doing it. They don't care much for challenge or gauntlet difficulty, they just want to hit big monsters with the coolest weapon they can find. That, or you're a speedrunner whose only goal is to complete the game at a speed faster than a hedgehog could even fathom. In which case, this weapon is an amazing choice because it's stupid easy baby mode. Just don't forget to sheath. It ain't an anime if you don't sheath that bad boy. The one, the only, Jack of all trades, master of none. The sword and shield wasn't sure what it wanted its specialty to be, so it just picked all of them. Not only did it steal everyone's gimmicks, it managed to do them better. Until Rise, at least. That nerf was brutal. When you pick sword and shield, you're not picking a weapon. You're making a statement. I'm here to make monsters cry and lead you all to victory. The sword and shield player is a proud leader who takes charge of even the most unorganized team, thrusting them into battle and protecting them from even the strongest of Legianas. There's also a solid chance you play bard in D&D and wear a wiggler hat. Don't think I don't see you. Fast, flashy, and button mashy. The dual blades are for the players who want to hit really quickly in rapid succession, laying out a constant barrage of pain in small doshes, like constantly pricking a man with a needle until he stops moving. The dual blades are for players who like to play like a wild animal, moving quickly and destroying your enemy with fast and reckless attacks. You're not here for complex button combos or coordinated attacks, you're here to push the win button as many times as you can per second. If you pick this weapon, you probably also take shotguns in shooter games. If you hit them before they can hit you back, you'll never lose. What if the Greatsword was bigger, faster, and ergonomically designed for maximum SPIN? Hammer players, you beautiful creatures. You're the people who looked at the Greatsword's mighty damage numbers and were enticed for a split second, but decided it was just a little too basic, so you grabbed the next best thing. This great big rock on a stick is built to outclass even Kulu Yaku in sheer egg smashing ability. If that Anjaneth gets his big dumb head even a little close to you, you're ready to deal the horniest of bonks. In any good anime, there's always five roles. You're the powerhouse. You're there to punch things really hard and occasionally drop one-liners. Obligatory sharpening joke. Hammer players like big damage numbers and being flashy while doing it. You live for the moments when your screen is covered with an onslaught of the number 500. Bay blade, bay blade, let her rip! In any good shooting game, there are three roles. Tank, damage, and healer. The hunting horn laughs at this idea, for it is all three. Fast attack speed, high damage numbers, support buffs, healing, you're here to do it all. The hunting horn player also happens to be a master at fighting games because your top skill is memorizing button combos and the exact moment to execute them. The hunting horn is the weapon everyone wants to join their hunts, but no one is brave enough to pick up. But you, hunting horn player, you've chosen the weapon and taken the mantle. You're ready to boldly go where no hunter has gone before. Better keep it sharp so it doesn't go flat. 
The Lancer, a warrior from the Middle Ages who rode on horseback and wielded a shield and a very long pointy stick. You may not have a horse, but you do have a very long pointy stick. The Lance is a weapon that is difficult to play and rewards you greatly for dedicating to it. The Lance player doles out a vicious punishment to monsters in their way, all the while defending their team from even the mightiest Rathalos' fire breath. As the Lance, it's your job to bellow in a proud voice, GET BEHIND ME! when you see the Puke Puke about to lose his lunch, then follow with a valiant charge straight into his throat. The Lance player is one who isn't afraid to take hits to keep their friends safe. They'll put in the work to learn something if it means they can improve their team. Lance players are also likely to eventually learn at least a little hunting horn, as they're always willing to play the role no one else wants to learn. With great pokey stick comes great responsibility. Oh, Gunlands players, you beautiful creatures. You don't know the definition of tierless. The word meta isn't in your vocabulary. You came here to have fun with your favorite weapon, regardless of how difficult or bad it may seem. The Gunlance is the Lance's cooler twin brother, who one day learned how to play with barrel bombs and hasn't been able to cut his addiction. This pokey stick comes with all the benefits of Lance, plus everyone's favorite, big booms. Gunlands players are the most creative of the bunch, trying out strategies and builds that would make the forum pages scoff as they sip their tea. A Gunlands player has only ever watched one tutorial, and that was how to use the weapon. They don't need strategy guides, they don't need forum posts, they're capable of creating new and effective strategies on the fly. Money can't buy happiness, but it sure as hell can buy explosives. Hmm, the long sword looks so cool, and I want to stab so badly, but the great sword is so massive and menacing. Oh, but that gun lance. Explosions are so much fun. Blast is my favorite ailment. I can't decide. What do I choose? Well, baby, do I got a weapon for you. Meet the Switch Axe, the unholy love child of the longsword, the greatsword, and a little side action from the gun lance. This beautiful creation is designed for maximum slash, stab, and boom! A Switch Axe player is there to make the monster's life a living hell with a constant barrage of too much damage. You love chaos and making your opponent want to cry after you beat them into a pulp. Your merciless onslaught doesn't stop until the monster runs away or stops moving altogether. With a weapon designed to fluidly transition from one combo to the next, you're prepared to never stop attacking until the monster calls out her safe word. Hit it till it stops moving, then hit it some more for good measure. Do you like fighting games? Do you like using every button on the controller? Do you like putting way more thought into each attack than should be necessary? Do you like the switch axe but feel it just wasn't complicated enough? If the lance is a tank, then the charge blade is an APC. The charge blade is the evil twin of the switch axe, deciding it would be more fun to copy the lance instead of the gun lance. Where lance and hunting horn players take the time to learn and practice fun but complicated weapons, you're not like them. You enjoy pouring yourself into a weapon, learning every facet of its complete capabilities so you can become the greatest combatant on the field. You are passionate about every task you undertake, dedicated to giving it your all. The charge blade is perfect for you because, like you, it thrives under dedication and study. I'd argue the charge blade is the most real world accurate because, like real swords, you can't just become a master in one afternoon. It takes a bit of study. Work hard. Become the master. The flippy flappy flying toothpick with your super psychic bug! The insect glaive is built for only the most flashy players, the players who have a certain set of skills and intend to show you that in the most in-your-face way possible. Insect glaive players are like ballerinas in the sky, flipping and slashing endlessly one after the other. Beautiful to watch, but deadly to the touch. Insect glaive players are big on personal space, insisting on not even touching the same ground as anyone else because that's just way too close for comfort. If you're the kind of person who likes to quickly get into social situations, then get out just as quickly via a rocket-powered stick. You're like Swan Lake if the swan was armed. Your team needs a healer, but you're not quite ready for the daunting task of Hunting Horn. You want to deal a pain train to the monster, but you don't really feel like intruding on his personal space. You enjoy the relaxing task of resource collecting and don't mind a crowded item box. Then you were made for the Light Bowgun. The Light Bowgun is the shy cousin of the Sword and Shield, built for a multitude of skills and roles, all while maintaining that sweet, sweet social distance. However, your main job is going to be Heal Boy, but you're fine with that. Healing means you get to hang back, and you're more than happy to do that. You get to shine when you impress your teammates with your multitude of ways to deal that damage. You enjoy showing off skill, and you're a whole lot to show off. You were really hoping this game would have more guns. Fortunately for you, the heavy bowgun is like having every gun in one. The skill monkey of Monster Hunter, you're able to fit yourself into almost any role. Damage dealing, I got you bro. Attention holder, I got you bro. Sniper, I got you bro. Shotgun, I got you bro. Healer, I got you bro. Daka daka daka, I got you bro.
Heavy bowgun players are loud and proud. You're a powerhouse when it comes to controlling the battlefield. You know all the environment traps and where they're located. No matter what arena you're in, you know how to make it your playground. You learned all about the arenas during your many adventures to collect resources, because that's how you spend 50% of your gameplay. It's about drive, it's about power, we stay hungry, you got firepower. Last, but never ever least, the bow holds the honor of being the most true to the adage, easy to learn, difficult to master. Bow players have been content and happy dealing their damage from the back for years. That's just how you like it. The archer in the back row. Hawkeye, Legolas, you're the cool guy. Then Rise came on and everything changed. Healer, buffer, frontline damage dealer, backline damage dealer, area assault. That's right, you've even taken the insect glaze domain. The battlefield is yours to control and you're thriving. With free healing and buffs at the push of a button, suddenly the role of support has fallen on your class and you're here for it. The bow player is someone who takes control of the fight. The guy who's got surveillance of the whole field and ready for call-ups and supports. It's your job to micromanage the entire fight. Shoot for the sky, then fly. So, which weapon did you pick? Does our description of that weapon match your playstyle? Did our descriptions make you rethink which weapon you're playing? Let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, I'm the Moly Sausage. God bless all of you.